Cody Harris was reinstated. This was a man that was in Provo, Utah. He had wore a green speedo at a um, uh, a birthday party that had some of the school children there. Then the kids all had a petition that he saved his job and shit. But he was reinstated as a police officer, right? He's dancing in a green speedo around a bunch of school kids. And he was a school resource officer. Even though he was reinstated as a police officer, he's not allowed to be back uh, as a school resource officer. So it's clear that the cops are out of control. It's a prison plantation. The 13th Amendment said no slavery is allowed unless you're convicted of a crime. If you're convicted of a crime, then they can slave the shit out of you. A million dollars to the family of 92-year-old Katherine Johnston. Police shot and killed her during an unconstitutional and illegal raid of her home back in 2006. Now it seems Katherine Johnston is giving the last word. Here's 11 Alive, John Sheeran. $880,000. That's how much a federal jury awarded him today as justice after an Orlando police officer broke his neck during a takedown. Daly was 84 years old at the time and has been waiting for this day since the incident happened back in 2010. Orlando officer Travis Lamont has maintained all along that Daly lunged at him, so he had no choice but to take him down. Today, however, a jury didn't buy it. Uh, fascist totalitarian police state, it's Leviathan, Thomas Hobbes. So, you know, it's interesting that you know, I'd mentioned this already, but Trooper Clanton says he and his client are relieved that the grand jury did not indict him on Monday. And they said that it's uh, an important element in his involvement that may prevent his indictment is abundantly clear that Officer Clanton didn't know this woman was underage and I think the decision not to present him to the grand jury was the correct one. Butler says the alleged victim was given recorded statements saying she lied about her age to Jerry Clanton. So that's pretty, he got recorded statements, right? With two indictments, the KSP says the case is far from being over. And awarded daily that huge sum after just a few hours of deliberations. Channel 9's Kathy Bellich is live at the federal courthouse right now. And Kathy, the jury rejected all the arguments by the city and the officer. The jury did not buy the city's claim that 86-year-old Dan Daly's life is back to the way it was before Orlando officer Travis Lamont broke a tooth-like bone in his upper neck. Now, how can Daly golf when he can't turn his head like this without turning his whole upper body like this? Daly says... He can't golf anymore. Soon to be 87-year-old Dan Daly smiled as he left the federal courthouse. Mr. Daly, what's your reaction? Just in the Drive along Neal Street in Northwest Atlanta to Katherine Johnston's boarded up home, and there she is. I wanted to depict her as if she was in her window looking out. Jansen Robinson is the artist who painted the mural on Katherine Johnston's house in her honor when he moved into the house next door to join the fight to save her neighborhood. I'm proud of the mayor for you know, stepping up and resolving this. My heart goes out to the Johnston family. Go to he was a skinny and obviously talented teen when he pounded out hard rock rhythms at his drum set. But family members say 18-year-old Keith Vidal also struggled with schizophrenia. And Sunday, he became too much for his parents to handle alone. Could you send an officer over here? We have a son that uh, has schizophrenia, and he's, he's not doing very good. we got to get him someplace. To Atlanta City Hall, where Mayor Kasim Reed announced that the city settled the Johnson family lawsuit for $4.9 million. Katherine Johnston is there. She's revolutionized city government and the police department. In the nearly four years since Atlanta police stormed into her home and shot her to death, during an illegal drug raid. That was Vidal's stepfather calling 911. He told the dispatcher this had happened before, and all they wanted was help getting him to treatment. He wants to fight his mother, or he's got a screwdriver. He just, you know, he's not doing good. She's scared to death of him. Two officers from two different departments responded, and family members say everything seemed under control. The jury awarded Daly $750,000 in pain and suffering and loss of enjoyment of life and another $130,000 for his past and future medical bills. It's not about money. I don't give a damn about money. <laughs> Daly says it was about what Orlando officer Travis Lamont did to him two years ago when Daly was 84. The officer testified he was afraid the elderly man would hurt him. 
Daly was upset because his car was being towed away and was repeatedly tapping the officer on his arm asking for assistance. Officer Lamont admitted he was irritated but never stepped back or warned the elderly man he could be arrested. And Officer Lamont told the jury he took down the elderly man exactly as he intended, even though Daly landed on his head and broke his neck. It absolutely assures that the people are watching the people who are watching us, and that's what's important. Officers calmly talk with their son. He wasn't violent. That's when they say a third officer showed up and ordered the two others to shoot Keith Vidal with stun guns. Seconds later, that same officer shot and killed him. They murdered our son for no reason. A family friend who had known Keith for years shared details with CNN I report describing how the 5'3", 100-pound teen fell when he was stunned, how two officers then jumped on top of him, and while they held him down, the third officer, who ordered the stun guns, then shot Keith in the chest and killed him. See this kid? This is my son. This is my flesh and blood that they murdered. The teen's family and friends angrily demand action against the officer. The district attorney promises to go wherever the truth leads. This was uncalled for, and this is not how mental health patients should be treated. An eye reporter describes Keith Vidal as a very passionate kid who loved music and basketball more than anything on this earth. And then planted drugs inside her house to frame her and cover up what they've done. Hopefully, the trust in the Atlanta Police Department will be restored. Jane Lamberti Sams and the other attorneys with the Cochrane Law Firm in Atlanta, who represented Johnston's estate and her niece, speak of Johnston's legacy. So there's, you know, only two of the four guys that got indicted. So, you know, you could just plead ignorance. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know she was. And um, they said that she had lied. Some recorded statements that said she had lied. So that's, you know, I guess I guess you're allowed to get away with it if that's but that's see that's just such bullshit. That's he's an officer, so that's why he's getting away with it. There's, you know, these people have white privilege and they um, uh, police privilege and you know rich people privilege, and that's why they get away with the shit that they get away with. Captain Johnson did not, in fact, die in vain. So does family spokesman Markel Hutchins. Four police officers went to prison. Ten more were disciplined. The narcotics unit was overhauled. A citizen review board was formed to watchdog the department. A tip line's being set up so officers can turn in other officers anonymously. His performances on YouTube and smiling selfies, all just memories now of a life abruptly ending. Two male jurors nodded their heads at Daly as they left court, a gesture indicating they felt they did right by the World War II and Vietnam veteran. Officer Lamont walked past our camera yesterday, but today he sneaked away to avoid our camera. Inside court, he smiled as he left. I asked why he was smiling. He wouldn't answer. So, yeah, they're running over people in wheelchairs. They're sitting beating up old men. They're killing old ladies. And, um, and I'm glad that they are actually suing the police and changing it. Maybe LMPD should follow Atlanta and get all the changes that Atlanta is getting, like a, a civilian police review board and an anonymous tip line and some other things. I think the review board is the best thing that happened, actually, for Atlanta. That means you have a watchdog group. You have a citizen-based panel watching over the police, and any police brutality that happens is going to be filed into their office. And maybe not one, maybe not two things might not do it if it's not you know big enough. But if it's... Um, you know, if it's several, then you can build up a case and say, hey, this person has been assaulting people constantly. Cut him off. He's not an officer of the law. He doesn't listen to the law. He's assaulting people, and assault's a crime. You can't assault people. That's, in fact, having an assault on your record can prevent you from getting a job for the rest of your life. Now, yesterday we reported about a dozen uniformed Orlando police officers showed up here at federal court as spectators, and most would not say whether they were on the clock. Well, today there were fewer officers who showed up here, and none of them was in uniform. Now, David Mattingly joins us now. David, what's the status right now of the three officers who were involved in this incident? Well, these three officers all came from different departments. One was a county deputy, and two were from local police departments. So far, the deputy 
and one of the police officers had been cleared of not violating any uh, sort of procedure or law by their respective departments. One other officer has been placed on administrative leave, and his attorney is saying that once the state has finished with its investigation, then everyone will find out that all of these officers were acting appropriately. The city abolished the controversial law that allowed police to arrest people on mere suspicion of drugs without warrants. In 2006, the year Johnston was killed, police arrested 7,700 people under that law, and yet judges ended up dismissing 6,400 of the cases. That sort of warrantless roundup is illegal now. And because of the blood of Katherine Johnston, we have a better police department, we have a better city. She's smiling in that pain. In Northwest Atlanta, John Shearick, 11 Alive News. You understand that? I got that, sir. You know what happens to nice little boys like you that have to go to jail for reckless driving? Ass to be hurting for a month. Special Prosecutor Tom Wine says at this time they decided not to present the case against the other accused officers. He says he doesn't want to comment on why because it could affect the other cases. The other accused officers are former Trooper Jerry Clanton and former Breckenridge Deputy Chris Woosley. And at times uh, things happen that uh, may not represent our agency uh, the way we want it represented, but uh, what I want to get out to the public is that uh, we still feel like uh, we do a really good job and uh, we're proud of who we are. Captain Johnson did not, in fact, die in vain. So does family spokesman Markel Hutchins. Four police officers went to prison. Ten more were disciplined. The narcotics unit was overhauled. A citizen review board was formed to watchdog the department. A tip line's being set up so officers can turn in other officers anonymously. He was a skinny and obviously talented teen when he pounded out hard rock rhythms at his drum set. 